Welcome to the London Horror Movie Club. I'm horror writer Lauren Jane Barnett. And I'm Chris Sapkowski, Lauren's older brother, and I've been watching horror movies since I was eight. Join us as we talk about the wild, weird, and wonderful horror films set in England's eerie capital. Welcome back, listeners, and Happy New Year! As we mentioned last month, Chris and I are so excited for this episode because we have with us Tony Martin, who has acted in everything from EastEnders to the Risen Horror Films, and is also a horror writer and director, including the upcoming truly unique Witches of the Sands. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, how you doing? Lovely uh, to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Happy New Year! Thank you. Happy New Year, Tony. My first question I want to ask you, Tony, is, you know, you're right now, I I see that, you know, on IMDb and stuff, you're working on Witches of the Sands, you know, you got the uh, Horoscopes Volume 1, and why, why horror movies? Like, what, what, what draws you Uh, to the horror movies? Oh, that's kind of easy, I I suppose. I mean, it basically, it stems back to my, I think probably like most people who, you know, love horror films uh, of our sort of age, uh, their childhood, and uh, I remember watching them. You know, we, we'd come down. We had we had um, in England uh, sort of uh, double bills on a Friday night, and we'd set the video uh, to record them Friday or Saturday night. And then I'd come down in the morning with my mum, and we'd watch them. I think on a Sunday morning, you know, and it was all Hammer and Amicus, and you know the occasional Universal, and you know that sort of thing. And uh, I always remember, um, you know, the Hammer logo would come up on the screen, and my mum saying, "Oh, that's a Hammer film," so you know it was going to be good. So you know, and uh, so I have a very nostalgic sort of. Uh, uh, feeling stuff to horror films, and they were a big part of my childhood. You know, and that that's that's I was I was fascinated with like Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, all these kind of guys, uh, and then and then also uh, that when when the Universal films were on, you know, I was glued to the glued to the screen. You know, I was saying the other day, actually, funnily enough, it's you know we 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 watched we watched films i think to start with when we were younger just because they were on you know in in, in england in the 70s there would be three channels uh four in the 80s you know and if there was a film on doesn't matter what it was you would watch it if you wanted to watch a film you know now it, 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 it's it's so different isn't it you know you you kind of you know especially you know if you're younger today you kind of watch the the, the latest thing on netflix and you or, or or prime or whatever and you don't you don't really worry too much about anything older than 10 minutes you know? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> you know and then you know even if you and very rarely you kind of get through the whole film you know so yeah back in the day you watched what was on and and i was always excited when it was a horror film you know and, and, and even things like um uh Abbott and costello me you know frankenstein and then you know and the, and the old mother riley and you know ah, yeah. all, all the all the you know the really camp tongue-in-cheek uh you know mashups and everything i, I absolutely adored all of it you know to see the monsters and, and everything i was fascinated with them really um and that's kind of where it's that's when it stems from yeah that that's that was that was where the love of horror came from then and then grew up in the you know the video nasties kind of era in the in the 1980s in england uh, where the, you know the videos didn't have certificates, and you know as you you guys know, you know it was there was a, all the videos got withdrawn from the shelves, and so I was sort of uh, was I seventy two? I was about ten, eleven when that was happening. So I kind of caught the tail end of it, and but yes, yeah, so I was always wanted to watch them more and more. You know, as you can imagine, and uh, and, and then from there, it just it just blossomed. Then so growing up into the eighties, which is a great sign for horror films as well. You know, so that that's basically where that's basically where it came from. Um, and then meeting like-minded people, and uh, yeah, I, I suppose always fascinated with the macabre. <laughs> <laughs> Is that was that video nasty era the thing that got you into doing uh, sort of like more gross out horror? Because Libra, obviously, uh, for anybody who hasn't <laughs> seen it, has more maggots than you can imagine. Very visceral and raw. Yeah, film. well, do you, do you know what? Not really. I don't. I don't think for. I mean. <sighs> I don't think so. Libra was um, so Libra. If I'm putting in context, then we, we were asked to, to contribute a, a, a short film for horoscopes. Uh, twelve directors, twelve star signs, obviously, and we, they, they were sort of handed out of the hat, you know. So we got random, uh, random star signs, and I got Libra. And um, I was like, okay, cool. I didn't really want a Libra first. I said, in fact, before I got, I said, I don't want Libra. I'm Libra. And I don't really want scales. It's too obvious to do like a revenge thing. And anyway, I got Libra, and and there we go. Uh, and then we, then I had an idea. I really liked it. Got James Newton on board, um, and uh, who who uh, directed a, a film called uh, Caternica and uh, uh, Black Lizard Tales, 
which I really like. And I love the, these, I really wanted black and white and a very stylish black and white look about them with uh, cinematographer Andy, who I'm working with on, on Witches. And um, I never really thought, I, I want to make this gross. I never wanted to make it a, a gross out thing. It started off, um, you know, without giving too much away, this guy in his flat, and every now and again, they'd just be like a maggot. Or he'd just get a pair of tweezers and he'd just pop them into a pop them into a little bowl. And it was quite humorous almost to start with. It just, you know, just it, every now and again, he'd look up and there'd just be a little maggot just crawling along, you know, just minding its own business sort of thing. He just gets tweezers. And, and then from there, we kind of worked with the idea and developed it. And, and uh, yeah, it became quite visceral and quite gross. And it wasn't, it, I didn't set out to make it, uh, to make something obscene or, or nasty. It just, it worked within the, within the context of what we were doing. And uh, Mike, I, I, you know, that again, without, well, actually, I'll give, give away. <laughs> there was one bit when Mike sits down and he's about to you know, masturbate. And um, my idea originally was that a little, you're going to see a little maggot just crawling over the top of his willy, which I thought would just be quite funny. You know, he's looking down and just crawling over. You're almost like quite comical. And he said, well, what I could do, what about I could, I could put them in the, my foreskin? And I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. And then, of course, we're like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we got, you know, I mean, it, it is. And so obviously, he sort of stands up and pulls it back, and these maggots fall out, and then, and it, it is quite effective. I mean, uh, unfortunately, the the, the 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 guy producing the film found it a little bit extreme for for, for horoscope, so it was. Um, it was refused entry, but um, that's all cool. That's no worries. Uh, it's, it's finding a new home now, so we're okay. Uh, no hard feelings and everything. Um, but yeah, again, it, we wasn't. We didn't set out to make something nasty. And, and we, we had six. Each just slot was about six to seven minutes as well, mm. and we wanted to get one or two, not shocks, but big kind of moments in that six minutes to make it effective. And so it wasn't so much about the narrative; it was about the look, about the sort of stylized black and white photography. But then, then you have this great sort of. Um, juxtaposition with the with the nastiness so i think i mean it's a bit you know probably inspired look by sort of human centipede two and necromantic one and two maybe and then, and then paul wiley who did the obviously did the music for terrify one and two came on board and did the score for that for us wow. that was amazing um wow. so yeah that was that was that was pretty cool and uh so that's what that's where lee became also no it wasn't really that that wasn't necessarily inspired by the nasty side of things um the short sort of pseudo trailer we'd done for i did for um video shop tales of terror that was definitely inspired by by nasties uh, and the, especially the don't films. You know, don't don't go in the house, don't go in the basement, don't yeah. them, don't don't cross the road, don't <laughs> buy a newspaper, <laughs> whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was definitely inspired by that uh, for like a very grindhouse feel trailer. That was called "Don't Sit on His Face." <laughs> it's about <laughs> a man who grows a drill out of his mouth and when he gets sexually aroused, hence the title "Don't Sit on His Face," oh. but that, <laughs> which was uh, which which works really well. So that's. That's going to be premiered at uh, Hall on Sea in a couple of weeks, I think, uh, in in the film. And then, um, and then, which is yeah, which is is partly inspired by nasties, but partly inspired by lots of different sort of subgenres as well that that I'm kind of interested in. We wanted to get. I thought, you know, I'm only making one film. I'm going to get. I'm going to bang as much as I can into it, and hopefully, it'll, there'll be some sort of narrative thread holding it together loosely by the end of it. So, so we'll see. With witches, uh, you know, you're, the cast is. You know, I, I obviously didn't grow up in England and I've seen, you know, you're giving me idea like things to watch, you know, later on. Cause I, I like to, when everyone goes to bed here, I'll, I'll watch just anything that be horror, like whatever, you know, be movies. Yeah, cool. they're, they're great. It's, it's, it, it is a, it kind of like you, it's nostalgia. It's just makes me happy, you know? And yeah, um, yeah. I love watching it, but with, with the witches movie, I mean, the cast is across the board. I mean, it's just, there's people that I've heard of. There's, I mean, I just watched the curse of the demon or night of the demon as it was in, in England. And yeah. like, you know, you have actors from there and it's just, was that your, to try to, you said you wanted to like a loose narrative to kind of tie it all together. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, the, so, uh, you know, we've got, we, yeah. So we saw a few people right at the beginning I, I had, uh, so basically it started off as a short film. It was going to be a little short. Um, and then my friend, um, Brandon Crane, who was in Stephen King's it just did a little scene for me. And then, the, the, then if this was gonna, this was going to be part of another anthology film that fell through. So I had this um, had some footage, and I thought really naively, right, I'm going to make a, a feature film. I, I obviously had no idea what I was doing, um, <laughs> and I had re- didn't realise it was three years later, so I'd still be finishing it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah um and then so i've got other few other people involved with some kind of really naive sort of ideas but uh, yeah some people got involved and, and, and they looks really good and when we, we tie it all together it's, it's kind of sort of very meta and well, it's kind of pseudo meta i suppose and it, it works yeah i mean each of the kind of guest actors like linnea and um uh lynn lowry and, and people like that they're all they're all kind of they're in it playing playing parts that are suited for them like you, you see a lot of them um, what i didn't want is you see a lot of uh films these days with sort of sort of cult names in and and they've got them in there and they don't really know what to do with them they're kind of in there and then they're off again you know after pouring a drink or you know imparting a word of wisdom but with 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 witches everyone who everyone the the, the sort of cult well-known actors they've all, they've all their parts were written for them specifically so uh hopefully hopefully it will make sense uh That's when, awesome. when you see it yeah i hope so and there's there's I mean, there's some bits obviously now I might have changed a little bit, but we can still fit it in around what we're doing. So, you know, it's because, it's because Witches is about a director directing a, a, a movie in his life, a sort of B movie in his life, kind of falling apart as he does it, very much like my own. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, um, and then as, <laughs> as the film goes on, as he's, di- he's, di- he's directing the film, we then see bits of the film he's directing, which means, which is how we can get away with kind of doing lots of different things within within the witches as a whole so you know one scene you know the director might be directing a, a where a, a zombie foot a scene or the next minute he might be directing a mummy scene and or whatever so we've got little snippets of bits and pieces in here and there but sort of paying homage really to, to to films that i've enjoyed throughout the years you know from hammer and 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 giallo and uh film noir and we've got a very cool sort of film noir squid creature scene which was a lot of fun to do she's a very sexy squid <laughs> femme fatale <laughs> which is uh yeah and um and with hillbillies uh yeah so yeah it's just a, it's just it's just kind of a fun way of mixing and matching so it's 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 not exactly an anthology film as such but there are kind of little vignettes that sort of s- stick together i suppose if that makes sense and then you've got the sort of the bits of tony the director directing as a, <laughs> loosely uh um, and his life sort of you know everyone taking the mickey out of him and him not doing a very good job and then him slowly descending into the madness and and murder as 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 the film progresses so and then ultimately killing everyone at the premiere which is quite a good fun that was good that was a fun (laughs) scene to see a fun scene to film in the (laughs) theater yeah we in the theater we hired him in whitstable i was up the road from peter cushing's old house funnily enough so Oh. oh very cool yeah. Is that the Cushing Theatre? Is that the one? Because it's, it's, it's not. The it's called the, it's called the Playhouse. Uh, there's a Cushing Pub, which is a Weatherspoons, um, okay. and there's a there's a there's a museum uh, with a nice little Peter Cushing section. Uh, yeah, a lot of people. Which was obviously just it's down the road. So yeah, uh-huh. I used to live just up the road from his old house. So I used to walk past it, you know, uh-huh. most days. So it was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lovely, very man. cool. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, was it kind of cathartic you as a director getting to make a scene where the director kills everyone at the premiere? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And that was that was quite a while ago now as well. So that was that was like that was easily the biggest the biggest sort of scene we'd done in terms of people. I think we must have had about hundred people in the theatre. And I it was quite and I wasn't I I was very naive, you know, again putting it all together and but it worked out really well, you know. Uh, but we fitted a lot into that day. We had two crews, you know, Alan Bryce was there and uh, Lindsay Drew Honey, you know, from American Werewolf was there and Pauline Pierre was there from uh, Satanic Rites of Dracula. Oh, I love her. And, and so a lot of, uh, a lot of um, sort of indie movie makers were there as well, like Michael Fausti and, and uh, Andrew Elias and stuff. And um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty, that was pretty wild. And then it's me sort of hacking through the audience at the end with a, with knives and pickaxes and crowbars and things it was it was insane i think we didn't i think we finally got out about 11 at night and i, I mean i worked everyone so hard bless them it was a strange old day uh it, it was it was good though i've learned a lot from that experience put it that way um but yeah it was and that, throughout the film as well there's been other times when we've been filming in the studio where the director's been killing people as well which has been an acting and playing a sort of you know, I've obviously put myself in there as much as possible <laughs> because what's the point of producing a film if you don't put yourself in it? Um, 100%. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I've been playing, I played a sort of a Reichsfuhrer, Thorn Lancer, the nasty Nazi in a real sort of Nazi exploitation section. Um, who starts off as like a very sort of innocent sort of German boy going off to war, then he becomes this really nasty guy. That was really good fun. 
and yeah, many others. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's been and the hillbilly hillbilly uh, grandpappy was really good fun. Yeah, so yeah, it's a, it's just yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I'm ready for I'm ready. We're, we're kind of closing down now. We've only got we've got we're shooting next Saturday. No, next Sunday we've got seance scene, uh, which is pretty wacky as as, as always. Um, but it's a really small scene. Uh, there's only sort of three actors in that. That'd be nice. Um, and then we're we're getting there. We're almost there. A couple of big what well, big scenes. A few more little ones in the studio, and we're done. And then it's all into post. <laughs> 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 okay, no, celebration before the celebration. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. There will be a celebration, mm. I think, for everyone, <laughs> for everyone involved. <laughs> there will be like a few, thank God for that, more than anything. Yeah, and then we can move on to some other bits and pieces, yeah. I know you did a little bit of animation as well. Is that something you do a lot of with post-production? Sorry, I've been stalking your Instagram. Yeah, no, it. it wasn't my animation. It was my, I had a couple of ideas, so... Uh, th- there's two there's two main animations there's three animations in, in 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 the film the one thing you're probably talking about is conquers for the brave which is stop motion so i saw uh there's a studio called spasm films um uh, debbie lane who does some lovely animation little stop motion puppets and uh, and things and i love the detail and the work and the she was obviously love for, for what she was doing and i and i'd written a haiku a while ago, as you do, you know, about <laughs> well, should I do a haiku about these two guys playing conquers, but in a strange little game. And basically, I've written a so what I've, I've written a book of poetry and short stories, which kind of getting together at the moment to get published, hopefully this year sometime, uh, with some illustrations and stuff. And um, and one of them, Conquers of the Brave, I thought it was quite a vi- nice to make a nice visual piece. Um, and so I got in touch with Debbie and said, you know, would you be interested if I give you this? Are you interested in animating this for for the film and after a lot of discussions she said yeah so that's great so it's great yeah it's fantastic yeah this strange little sort of three line poem um you know haiku is a, a japanese poem with 17 syllables and three over three lines five seven and five and then so yeah i, I found a I found a, a voiceover artist to uh how i wanted to uh to to, to narrate the poem with a kind of vincent price-esque uh tone to his voice and yeah, and basically I left it up to her then. We, we, we had a chat, we had a lot of ideas going forwards and backwards. And then she sent me some ideas and I loved them and then off she went. And then, then she sent me some test stuff and it was amazing. And got it all together and she wrote, the, she did it all, she edited it. She wrote, the, she, she wrote, she sang a song that uh, her brother, I think, is a musician and they did the music. It's fantastic, yeah. So that will be, so that's going to be shown again at Horror on Sea as a, uh, the only time outside of Witches of the Sands is a short. Uh, that's next week, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, so, yeah, that'll be shown there as a, as a short, Conquest of the Brave, which will be nice to see. But that's a lot of credit there goes to, go, needs to go to Debbie. Um, and then, similarly, uh, Mark Stewart, who uh, is a great animator as well. He did the credits for a film called Wyvern Hill, which I think is called uh, Hollow in the States. And I saw his animation, and I wanted to animate, and I got in touch with him to do some different kind of stuff, very sort of more Terry Gilliam esque, and uh, and so I sent him some images and said, you know, are you interested? And he said, yeah. So he's been doing another piece of animation as well, with really sort of bizarre images from the films, and very Terry Gilliam, very Python, uh, with a song with our Witches of the Sand song over the top of it, which was uh, written by Chris Nelthorpe and, and sung by Chloe. And um, that's great as well. So it's all it's all bizarre. I mean, I mean, it is. It's literally Python meets Grindhouse meets The Office. That's how I'm. That's how I describe it. <laughs> it, it. It is. You know, it is. It is strange because I think I think the thing is I wanted to make something. I wanted to make something a little bit different uh, to 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 a lot of what's out there. And that's not that's not I'm not denigrating what is out there. But I just wanted to do something different. So that's kind of what I've done. Really, it's a bit of going to be a love or hate. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what to think of it at the moment. It's it's a crazy little film. I love it. You know, <laughs> it is. It's it's crazy. But um, we'll see how we'll see what happens when you know. I don't know. After putting your heart and soul kind of into this movie, I mean, you, you mm. mentioned that it's taken you know three years, which you, you mm. weren't anticipating. Um, do do you prefer the directing side to the acting side? I mean, I know it obviously sounds weird to say that after you just you know you said how much work you've put into it, but. Mm. Is there something nice about being able to 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 do your vision and and to try to work that, or is it just you'd, you'd rather just go in and just you know like let, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do yeah, it you know and, and I'll act it. 
there, yeah, I totally get that. There's there's nice there's, there's positives to both sides to both of those things. I think it's lovely. I love acting and I'm um, in other people's stuff. I love it, you know, because I can just like you say, have my own ideas, have a chat, and then do what I'm told, you know, which is which is nice, you know. But you know, um, on the other side of it, uh, I love directing, I love writing, and I love, um, what I hate, I hate the production side of it. Uh, that's the bit that's you know budgets and locations and catering and getting the cast in and doing call sheets and and all that that, that that's 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 what's ta- that's what takes all the time you know right and and that that logistic side of it is just unbearable for me <laughs> i can't stand it it's just it's just horrible um so sort of directing myself is fine that's absolutely good i don't mind that at all uh so i kind of know what i want uh and yeah directing i love um, especially when I've got a good, great crew around me as well, you know, because you know the directing is like it's like kind of this is what I want, and you talk to you talk to people, then you then you bugger off for a bit, and you come back and they say, how about this? And you go, yeah, that's exactly what I want, <laughs> or not, <laughs> uh, and then they get on, then we get on with it, and so and that's it, you know, that's 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 what's great about directing, you know, uh, when you've got when you've got that when you've got that that crew around you. Uh, they say, well, they say, all they say, I say, Tony, no, that's not possible <laughs> because <laughs> because we haven't got the budget for that. And so, so what can you do then? And they'll say, we can do this. So we'll do that then, you know, and it's all good. So yeah, it's just it, the production side of it is is the most off putting. You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing this again, put it that way. Um, <laughs> if if uh, you know if which is if which is gets you know does, does all right or or does you know makes a bit of money or or whatever, and someone says, oh, Tony, I really love that. Here's hundred grand to do another one pay yourself pay the crew then great i'll do it you know um but i'm not going through all this again no <laughs> no no way <laughs> would you try to find someone to help you out do that i mean would that would that be like kind of a lesson learned like would you try yeah, to yeah. maybe not the, a production the, the problem, company but someone that could do that yeah but i mean the problem is i, I think I, i'd want my cake and eat it as well I'd, I'd want someone else to do all the work and provide the money but i'd want total control over the product <laughs> <laughs> Well, that so, makes sense to me. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense to me as well. But I just don't really see that happening, right? You know, um, I mean, if there was, if there was, if if the money was there, and it was a great producer, and they said, "Hey, Tony, we'd love you to direct this," and great, you know, uh, then fantastic. And I turn up and I and I do what I'm supposed to do, and not worry about the production side of it. Then great. Right, um, you know, but you know that's that's a pipe dream. You know, I mean, how, how many <laughs> thousands of you know directors in this position would, would love that? You know, everyone, you know, yeah. micro budget filmmakers. You know, it's um, you know, it's ludicrous to even think that, really. But you never know. You know, yeah. um, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, this has been this is, this is a great experience, uh, and and I made a lot of friends through it, and I've learned a lot. You know, I think important. It's been a steep learning curve. Turns out you can't just make a feature film. <laughs> Weirdly, I mean, who knew? Who knew? Can't just knock one. Can't just knock it out in the, in a couple of weeks. Um, no, honestly, that's a good. That's a good lesson. I think quite a lot of people I know would just be like, "Oh, we'll just make a film," and I'm like, yeah, "Oh yeah, no problem." Like, well, you got, got a couple of minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's. Do you know what I mean? That's that's um. It's quite interesting because that's what I liked about Libra, and I liked about doing um the don't sit on don't sit on his face trailer is that we we Libra we made in two days, and the same with don't sit on his face. So don't sit on his face. I think we made him the first one. We, well, we got two. Two trailers. The first one we did in one night. The second one we did, which is going to be so. so the first Don't Sit on His Face trailer will be in Video Shop Tales of Terror. Don't sit on their faces, which is with the sequel. The trailer will be in Witches, and that's got <laughs> Lawrence Harvey from um, Human Centipede in it, and that and he was oh. absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah, so that's that'll be in the second. That'll be in Witches. So yeah, uh, but there's a lot of lovely little short films that we can get done. That, you know, uh, uh, are great, and I think that's that's kind of where I would be more inclined to be in, in future uh, we've got um even though we were sort of exiled from horoscopes for libra we were asked back to do horoscopes too which is based on the chinese star sign so like you know the rabbit uh dragon so we've got and we've got rabbit so we're going to be looking at that for this month so that'd be nice that's exciting because that's the year that's coming up isn't it it's going to be the year of the rabbit in oh, the end of january yeah i didn't even know that I didn't even know. That. It's funny. We we have been looking. Um, we've been looking. Me and James again uh, at, at some ideas, and we come up. With some, we've come up with some, some some nice little ideas with no maggots in and no willies in it. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll try. We'll try and keep this one a bit cleaner. Hopefully, 
yeah. going after a whole new audience. No whole maggots, new audience, no wieners. A whole new audience, yeah. When they, <laughs> when, they, when they first said, you've got a rabbit, all I could think was Ann Summers. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll be very popular with the female horror. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It'll just, just, just be another rejection, won't it? So, uh, <laughs> so we'll, we'll try and, we're going to try and keep it cleaner. Yeah, so, that, so that's good anyway. So that's, that's looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I'm getting witches done. So I'm doing a again. I've just been acting in a film called um, I can't think what it's called. I can't think what the working title is. But again, by Joe James, who did Caternica and Bat Lizard Tales, playing a sort of a, a cop a detective, and I've really enjoyed that. And he was works very quickly. Um, just gets it done, and uh, and I like that. You know, that attitude. And he's very sort of uh, he's got you know good camera work, good skills. He knows what looks good. And the, the really wacky kind of uh, off kilter narratives, which I quite enjoy as well. So, uh, yeah, so I was, I was doing that, and like I say, yeah, if I, if I was to do something else, it would be yeah quicker and and you know, or, or have like I say, have the money in place and get a film done over a month instead of three years. You know, yeah, that's that's the thing. Yeah, definitely. Gotcha. That being said, did did you have a favorite moment? of directing which is of the sands has there been one moment where you're like yeah this was an awesome ex- minute or um, oh well i mean i suppose uh yeah when ian mcculloch uh came down from zombie flesh eaters and survivors and zombie holocaust and stuff and we were chatting to him but i was chatting with quite a bit before and and he seemed very nice and everything and i'd heard a couple of heard a couple of things where people said oh he's not people can be prickly to work with and i didn't know he seemed very nice to me so i was always a bit a little bit you know, what, what, what to expect. And then he turned up and I said, you know, we we're going to fly him down from Scotland. He said, now I'll drive. He wanted to drive like his independence. So bless him. He had like a, an awfully long drive down, stayed in the hotel the night before. I got onto set, I think about half eight or nine in, in the morning in Essex. And he, and we did two days in one day there and one day in Faversham in Kent. And um, he was the loveliest man. Absolutely lovely. You know, I couldn't speak highly enough of him. And, um, you know, bless him. He's like, he's 80, 83, I think. But he was, he was, he would do anything, you know, for us. And it was quite fun. He then drove back to, to Kent after on the Saturday for the next shoot on the Sunday. And I was exhausted because it had been a really busy day. We'd had, um, yeah, him in with his sword. He, we, I basically, I made him like a sort of, um, his Captain Mark way. So a bit like, you know, Captain Kronos, uh, the vamp- vamp- vampire hunter, Captain Kronos, vampire hunter, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Hammer film. And so we dressed him very much like that. And a sort of military cloak and a, a sabre and, and stuff. And he looked very, very cool. And so he was, he was there, and it, it was like a sort of weird, so he was like a sort of a monster hunter, I suppose, in this weird little scene we had. We got this sort of a sort of cyberpunk-esque kind of Victorian carnival thing going on with zombies on chains and a, a werewolf girl and uh, a living doll and, and um, uh, what's it called, a minotaur and, um, and this crazy kind of uh, MC host, carnival host. Yeah, it was, that was a crazy day. It was crazy, but it was so good. We had three three special effects artists working that day. We had to, you know camera crews. We had a couple of camera crews. Whole the whole lot. It was such a good day. It was so busy. And anyway, m- myself and Andy, the cinematographer, were driving back. I think it must have been about nine. It must have been getting back to Kent about half nine at night. Absolutely shattered because we've been up since about six in the morning. And phone goes off in the car, and it's Ian. He said, <laughs> "Ian, he was like, uh, going to." Let's go, let's go out for some supper. <laughs> and he was like, right, my treat is go and get let's go and get an Indian. So it's like we got we got to we got to um to to where where is he staying? We're staying in Whitstable. Yeah, staying in Whitstable. We got to Whitstable, I think about ten. We booked so we booked this table for ten o'clock in in the in the Indian restaurant. I was absolutely shattered, but you know, you don't say no. <laughs> and he said, he said, he said it's like this is a treat, it's on me. Uh, so bless him, he bought me and Andy our, our, our curries and a couple of beers and stuff. And we knit back and um, went and did a similar day in Faversham at the bookshop. And Alan Bryce again came down for that as well. And um, yeah, it was great. So I've got, I've got a lot of lovely, lot of fond memories of that. I mean, I've got fond memories of a lot of it, really, if I'm being honest. Every time I'm on set is usually 99% of the time it's been fantastic you know there's only been one day that i've really the one day near the beginning that was awful which i can't even begin to talk about <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then and then other than that everything's everything's gone gone really nicely Every, so lawrence harvey's been lovely to work with everyone pauline yeah everyone's just lovely i can't you know and then getting other people on board has been nice as well so sort of like tommy rutter who does a lot of uh, indie stuff he he plays a sort of um 
uh, Rod Sterling, I'm a massive Twilight Zone fan, uh, Rod Sterling-esque type character uh, who sort of walks in and does this crazy sort of little thing. And yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, sometimes that's the nicest part of doing the production side of it is that sometimes you can just say, go back, this is what you're doing, go and do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. not having to worry too. And relying on their talent, which is nice. But yeah, no, it's, it's just been, it's been a great journey. So that, that, there are a couple of things that sort of stick out, I suppose. But, you know, if I was to be honest, there's many more. There's times when we've, we've uh, sort of stayed in a house in Herne Bay and we did a, we did a haunted house scene. That was really good fun. And up in Essex. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just, it's, it's just been, it's just been a fun ride. I think, you know. One thing that I wanted to ask you before I even started talking to you was, is there a location that you would love to shoot in, in England in general? I mean, is there something that, whether it's a short, whether it's a feature, um, is there like one specific location that like, if you could get into there and shoot, you would take it in a heartbeat? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think, uh, I think like an old hotel, I mean, that sounds cliche, but um, I think you could do a lot, you know, we, it almost happened actually as well, but it kind of fell through. Um, but we just look like we've got a, a restaurant which we're going to which we're going to use for a little bit. But um, I mean, nothing nothing really specific off the top of my head. I mean, it's just somewhere. I, I think I think you know um, a, a hospital again would be great. No, I mean, I'm not a not a not a not a crazy derelict you know mental asylum which you know you, you often see, <laughs> but um, you know a, a fully working hospital. I think would, would I think would provide a lot of uh, interesting idea you know you could do a lot 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 with that uh, right. or a library a library again might be quite nice but no i don't try to think of anything specific no a well we, you know again we, we almost had this hotel a well in this indoor well which we're going to we're going to sort of put someone in and we, uh, you know, we've got this great idea about you know people very well-off people sitting there you know, sitting around having these weird dinners and every now and again there's this weird deformed character in the well and th- this little idea is going on in my head and eventually obviously gets out and does strange things but um yeah i think i don't know anything anything that you know that i think would, would look that provide something interesting to the eye i think i think the thing with with, with these sort of micro budget low budget films is anything you can do to imp- you know increase production value visually is, is really important so that that's that's why you know we, we've aimed to get really good locations and and little things like you know we've got you know we've got horses and vintage cars and uh, you know, and, and, and just things like that, that that just provide maybe that little bit of extra sort of value for the for the audience. You know, uh, gives it a little bit of credence, almost. You know, a little bit of uh, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting to see that sort of thing. You know, instead of just you know, I, d- I don't know, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say. I think I kind of do, but um, yeah. So that, that that's it. Any anything really that that can stand out. Or, you know, like a, you know, a castle. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Canterbury Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. That's my answer. Can't <laughs> that would do it. That would do it. In the, yeah. So you've got you've got this the organ upstairs. You've got the crypt down below, and you've got the, you know the churchyard. You've got everything there. Everything you could ever need, really, for, for a horror <laughs> film in, in one location, and probably added spirits and God. So, okay. so there, you there you go. go. <laughs> so there you go. Well, Lauren, you have a new place to take me when we come over. When I come back over there, we're we're just knocking out this list. I'm going to Canterbury Cathedral. I'm going to Canterbury. imagine all of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Canterbury Cathedral. Then you can pop over to Whitstable, just have a look at Peter Cushing's house. I'm going to have to take the Cushing's view as well. That was oh, very yeah. exciting for me. Cushing's view. Exactly yeah. that. Exactly <laughs> that. So I, to, to ask a sort of very broad question, and I think you, you maybe have, have hinted at this already, talking about things you have to think about for horror film directors. A few, few of our listeners are in school learning about directing films. Do you have sort of useful advice now that you've put together a film as a director yourself? Uh, I, I would say... I mean, you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is why we're asking the right person. The people exactly. who polished answers are exactly. the worst. <laughs> I would say, I would say, the most important thing then uh, would be to get your budget in place. Get someone who can get someone on board who can budget and don't overstretch. <laughs> um, you know, try and stick to a, some sort of schedule as well. I mean, uh, the thing, the thing with witches is it, it started off very differently, and with witches, it's it's actually benefited from this organic kind of growth throughout the, the the two to three years we've now been doing it. If, if we'd finished it in two weeks at the beginning, it would it would be in a very different film. It wouldn't have been as good, you know, but now it's grown into something, you know, hopefully a little bit more um, appealing. 
so it's it's because I'm I suppose I'm gonna, I, it, mm, it's tricky, isn't it? I don't I don't really oh. see. So what I should be saying is you know make sure you've got your script in place, make sure you know. But, <laughs> but, but we haven't. But if I'm honest, we haven't got a finished script for witches. So, <laughs> so, so someone, someone says, "Yeah, I'm interested in being in it." Can I look at the script? I'm like, "Nah, <laughs> not really." I can show you. I can show you your scene. Uh, <laughs> um, so you know, I probably go about things very, very differently. Very, uh, you know, very, very wrong. And I, I'm a big sort of believer in sort of um, for me winging it and uh, and seeing what happens. But I'm not saying that that's a, a good thing. I'm, I'm saying that that's just kind of the way I've done it. And and if an opportunity arises, then I'm, then then I grab it. Now that might have been changing script or or you know sometimes if a location comes up like you were talking about earlier. Then I've seen something that I then I then I would kind of try and write it in. That's probably not the right way to go about it, you know. Or well, it isn't, is it really? <laughs> it's clearly not. But um, but that's that's kind of what I've done. But for me, it's benefited. But then at the same time, it's taken, you know, three years. It's probably going to take four years before it's done. So, you know, that's that's the payoff, you know, I suppose. That's where you've got to, um, what you've got to think about. Do you want to get your film finished in two two weeks or two years? You know, are you in it for the, the long haul or do you just want to, do you want to get it done and out there? And I think, you know, I, I, I would much rather get it done and out there <laughs> but uh, the way the way my little brain works and the way you know the, the financings worked and everything that it just hasn't been possible and obviously everyone's got a full-time job so everyone fits in shooting around other things yeah i mean, I mean don't don't be like me <laughs> be, 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 be prepared to be prepared to give up everything uh that you know you hold dear and um yeah, and realize that might happen if you're not careful that sounds a bit like the the, the actual uh, storyline of Witches of the Sand. <laughs> well, the, I'm glad you realised that, Lauren, because it, 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 yeah, essentially that is it. Now, it, without without the murderous side of me, it, it has, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, we're, we're, we're still, you know, I'm still thinking about that premiere, so uh, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it certainly has been. And I've actually written certain parts into the character that have mirrored my life and what's been going on in my life. Yeah, a lot. And and um, so yeah, exactly. It's, it's exactly it. Actually, yeah, I, you, yeah. Not many people have sort of picked up on that, but um, um, or been you know or, or mentioned it. But yeah, essentially, yeah, that is that is it. And it's so, so that part of the film is actually quite personal. I mean, it's very funny in places as well. You know, it's it, but um, it's certainly um. It's certainly quite poignant and and uh, shrouded in misery <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Well, you've been so gracious with your time, and I do. I did want to ask one like last question of you, and it's it, it'll actually be maybe an easiest question you'll ever get, or it could be a, a real thinker. But we have, you know, kind of when my sister and I, when we talk, and uh, we realize that you know we have really close friends and and people that we connect with on a day to day basis that despise horror movies they they don't they don't even want to put on anything that is remotely mm. horror like thriller even scares them you know but if you were going to give someone a horror movie to start with you know wow. obviously you don't want to drill coming out of their face when they get sexually aroused might not be the movie that they want to start with but no. what movie would you suggest for a newbie coming in that has never gone in there but like hey try this out and see what you think okay oh now i suppose yeah oh I suppose there's a few there's a there's a few factors I'd have to ask. What sort of age are these people? You know, so I suppose if they're older people, I, 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 it might be something along the lines of The Wicker Man. Um, okay. I don't know, possibly. Ah. Uh, um, Interesting. If it was someone uh, maybe younger, sort of my son's age at nineteen, maybe something along the lines of uh, Malignant or. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've seen anything sort of particularly that's really thrilled me lately. I don't think I have really. Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, a creep show, creep show. Oh, There's the answer. Yes, creep okay. show. Uh, creep show. Uh, Return of the Living Dead. Um, because I think with those, with those two, they're very similar in tone. They're very funny in places, but they're also, in their own way, they're kind of really unnerving and scary. And they're kind of there's something that there's something you know. I'm thinking about both of them really. There's something. There's something about you know, I suppose, especially in creep show, you kind of take these sort of 
situations that you know they're not one of the mill are they but they're they're the situations, you know, someone's living on the run in the farm, someone's having an affair, you know, someone's like revenge, someone this, this, the guy scared of cockroaches. And then you twist it around with that great kind of EC comics style. I think I think and I think with 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 something like Creepshow as well, you've got you've got the short tales that will keep people interested, hopefully. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of fun to be had with that, especially for me, uh the first one with uh, you know, Nathaniel, was it Grand uh, Father's Day? That's a great little story. I absolutely love that. And uh, and yeah, and I think yeah, for a film, I think yeah, for for a, for a, uh, a Return of the Living Dead, I think it's a bit of a classic. It's just really good fun, it, but it's yeah. bit, it's unnerving, you know. So it's, there's no way out, you know, for these guys, and that it's uh, it's quite scary as well. Yeah, so that I think they'd be they'd be quite good. But you know, I suppose it would depend if then you've got the sort of highbrow friends, haven't you? Who like, you know, don't really like horror films because you know they're really just really slashers. So I'd probably yeah. say something like um, I don't know, Eyes Without Face or. Ooh, uh, I don't know. I see by the eyes of that face. I think maybe for that one, because that's a cracking little film. Uh, Carnival of Souls, I think, is a brilliant film. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. There's there's a few. There's a few, I suppose. Uh, Hereditary, I think, is a brilliant film. I absolutely oh, adore so Hereditary. Good. Yeah, so I good. absolutely adore Hereditary. I thought um, I, I liked Miss Summer as well. I preferred Hereditary. I thought it was just absolutely a brilliant horror film. And I know it's got its detractors and I kind of understand it to a certain extent, but I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the best best horrors I've seen for many years. Um, mm. Yeah, so that'd be up, that'd be up on the list as well. So again, so I suppose it depends on my target audience. So there's a few right. a few a few different ones there that I would I would probably show. What about you? What would you show? Oh, that's interesting because the reason I you know that this kind of question came up was um I have two children. Uh, my daughter's 16 and my, my son's 13. Mm. My son, who I would think would be into slasher flicks and all this stuff, because I started watching Nightmare on Elm Street, was my very first movie I ever saw as a horror movie. Mm. And it scared me. I couldn't sleep, you know, and mm. and it was but it was kind of brilliant because it it made you feel things. You weren't, you weren't just watching stuff. You were like, you know, you were like enthralled with it. Mm. He doesn't want to see anything. He watched The Conjuring because everyone else in our family watches The Conjuring and he mm. watches it through his fingers, you know, and it's the funniest thing because he's like this tough 13-year-old boy and he thinks he's tough. Mm. But then like a ghost on a screen is like petrifying him. My daughter, on the other hand, will go through, we have a, a poster in our in our room where we watch our movies and it's the 100 great, like, I guess, I don't know who voted on it, but like the 100 horror horror movies i'm looking at it right now 100 horror movies like great horror movies yeah. and we and you can kind of scratch them off as you oh, watch no, yeah. them yeah and we've gone through those and some of them she's like this stinks or and it doesn't matter the age it doesn't matter if it's a 1980 you know movie or or you know the grudge uh the remake of the grudge she'll watch them all and, and kind of give sometimes she leaves and wants to go on instagram and go hang out with her friends and sometimes sure, she sure. stays through them all but it's it's funny. I I think I I always like tend to lean towards more of the the thriller side. Creep show I never thought about, and I think Creep show would be one that you know this this story, this specific story might be scary, but then the yeah. next one might not be as scary, but it might be more of like intellectual. Um, yeah. And so that's a, that's a great call. Uh, you know, I I and always tend to lean. There's a lot to be. There's a lot to see in in oh, creep show yeah. you that can, you know even if you're not too bothered visually it's so it's the colors and and the and the uh, and the, the comic strip style of it and everything it, it offers something a little bit different doesn't it so it does yeah, sort of, you know and great it, cast yeah. great oh, cast and too. a great cast Always, and a great yeah. cast what about yeah. you lauren what was the one that you were because your friend that i met when i was there that's from austria she she, she doesn't like horror house. movies <laughs> but what were, were what were you thinking of trying to show her uh, I mean, I tend to, so my, my, my friend Tony for context, our, our generation, and she just doesn't like horror films because she grew up around the, the sort of video nasties. And so I'm always trying to give her older ones. So things mm. like Night of the Demon, things cool. like very old school Hammer, you know, the very first Dracula's ones where it's yeah. all the horror stuff that you know and love, but it's not as in your face. Yeah, sure. But that's not necessarily, like you were saying, that's for a certain audience. That's not mm. to get you into what horror is now, you know? Exactly, yeah. Well, Tony, okay. you sold me on on the Witches movie, man. Like, the, what you're describing, like, different pieces, I am ready. And I'll be honest, it's the your theater premiere view, I'm getting glimpses of, and I, and I mean this in the best way possible, but Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. If you've seen it, the Quentin, when, when they, they are there to kill Hitler. Yes. And they're, everything's like burning and everything. And I'm like, I'm like, you're, you've taken that and you've like ramped it up. And like, I'm, yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah. ready to see this. So it's, it's yeah, I'm I mean, in. That's, 
that it was it was say me running through the through the yeah through the seats in a the theater it was was great we uh, next day they rang us actually we managed to break one of the iron the iron seat arms <laughs> <laughs> but they were they were they were very kind and they said they had a spare one they wouldn't they didn't charge me to to fix it so that was nice <laughs> but um yeah there was there was i think there was a lot of bruised bruised bodies and uh and things but yeah no no I ho- hopefully hopefully uh you'll enjoy it you know i'm, I'm, I'm really excited for it so um yeah, just get, getting it done. So we, we're shooting on Sunday uh, in Canterbury. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Awesome. So you heard it here, you guys. Look out for Witches of the Sands. Tony, I think you're premiering a little bit of it at Horror on the Sea. Is that right? Well, um, Horror on the Sea is showing Conquers for the Brave right. uh, with the, the, the stop motion animation scene, which we talked about earlier. That's, that's, the, only, that's the only part. But that will be on. That will be the only time it's, it will be seen outside of Witches. So pop along and see it. There's loads of there's two two weekends of sort of great indie horror films going on there. So, uh, and uh, that's where uh, the video shop Tales of Terror will be on. That's where my sort of pseudo trailer uh, don't sit on his face. It will be shown at me in there somewhere. Yeah, and you can see horoscopes as well without my Libra in it. Ah, not the same. I think they've <laughs> missed out. I think they've missed out. I'm just well, saying. Well, you know, they, they 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 it is it is what it is. No no hard feelings. You know, it's yeah. uh, it didn't suit him. It didn't suit him. You know, and, and, and Libra's found. I hope it looks like he's found a new home. So we're, we're it, you know we're fine. And then they've asked us back to direct it in the second one. So exactly, yeah. So we'll look out for Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, amazing. Everybody, absolutely. If you if you get the chance to look up Witches of the Sands, look up Tony Martin. He is on Indie Pop. He is on Instagram. And thank you so much for joining us. This was very exciting for Chris and I. It really oh, was yes. great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, no, thank you. It's been really exciting for me, actually. I've been looking forward to it. And it's got me out of... Uh my uh ill my old was infected bed so. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where but i went back to you all thinking where's tony gone um yeah no it's been lovely thank you very much for having me on it's been a pleasure thank awesome. you so thank much you. and and from chris and i thank you for listening and have a great month if you want to share your thoughts about this episode please head to our facebook or youtube pages We're grateful to Kukurbit, who made our music. Thank you for listening, and please join us next time for the London Horror Movie Club.